Well, good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday to you. Shalom to one and all. Um, I don't foresee myself being very long. The reason why I'm on here primarily is to provide a video version of a status that I put up earlier this morning. And it's this, this video is primarily for my, uh, my public page because I just posted it on my personal page as far as the status is concerned. And just a public service announcement. Um, sometime in the near future, I will no longer be broadcasting if I am led to broadcast in the future, which would seem to be the case that I will be. <laughs> All right. So in the near future, I will no longer be broadcasting on my personal page. My broadcast will primarily be on my public page. So for any of you who, who watch, um, Again, whether live or the replay, who watch my broadcast on from my personal page, who are on my friends list, and who value my contribution to the body of Christ in any way, just to let you know that in the near future, um, I will exclusively be only be broadcasting to my public page. I don't necessarily have a date, but it will be in the near future. All right. So just as a public service announcement, and so basically, again, what this is is a video version of the status that I put up earlier this morning on my personal page. So basically what I'm going to do is read it verbatim and there's something else that I need to bring forth to it again, which it would be too long if I did it on the status. And so that's a lot and also the reason why I'm doing a video version of the status. All right. So hallelujah. So with that being said, honor you father, honor you father. With that being said, um, formalities out of the way my name is Gary Jean Baptiste as evidenced by my name there um, I am a follower and disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua or Yeshua <clears throat> when I come here or any other platform when I'm instructed of him or of my father Yahweh to do so and so I'm here by no other reason but by obedience and by instruction and so as I said I was led to put up that status as an important reminder, but I, I'm doing a video version primarily for the, the public page, right? And so I'm going to be pray, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to begin. Say what I have to say and then be out of your way. I pray that your weekends are blessed and I pray that your day today is blessed as well, right? So, Father, I honor you. I honor your children. It is an honor to be before you and it is an honor to be before your children. Father, um, I pray that those that would watch, whether live or on the replay, that their eyes, ears, and hearts would be open to receive that which you would have me say, Father. And that is in regards to the deception. The deception that says that just because you've been a certain way your entire life means that you're, you're, in, you're incapable or unable to change. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Because you, Father, in particular, are more than able and quite capable of changing anybody. <clears throat> and there's uh, the myriad of scriptural examples in which you have done so. And so, um, Rasan Turi, have that on way in this broadcast, even as, as, as um, short as it most likely will be. But I yield myself to your, to your spirit say what I need to say, that I see all things succinctly, clearly, and what sound of speech. Let your name be praised, let your name be glorified in all things that I do. Not about me, it's about you, Father, and about your dear Son. So have that own way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. So, let me get the strings out of the way and go to my notes because there's things that I want to say after I read. Well, I want to read the actual status, of course. Um, read it verbatim, and then from there make a few points and be out of your way. All right? And so, the just the way I am deception. Right, there are many who subscribe to this ideology 
and belief that the personality, particularly thought and behavioral patterns that has been developed in your formative years is who you are and cannot be changed. I want to remind us that this is a deception. And I am specifically referring to patterns that are rooted in trauma. Say that again. I am specifically referring to, hallelujah, patterns that are rooted in trauma. <clears throat> patterns that are perpetuated. And I'm, for those of you who, who have watched my previous, a few previous of my broadcasts, you know what I mean. And you know what the word perpetuate means. It means that something is continuing and there's no intentional um, move to stop that which is being repeated. Right? It's an intentional, um, it's an intent to have something repeat, particularly a pattern or a cycle, right? <clears throat> that is what to perpetuate something means, to not put a stop to it, right? So, patterns that are perpetuated through emotional triggers <clears throat> and coping mechanisms. <clears throat> many, of us, many of us know that coping mechanisms primarily derive through trauma. There are those people, there are those within the scientific world that, 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 that have categorized, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that have categorized positive or good coping mechanisms, but ultimately, primarily, coping mechanisms often derive as a means to cope with unresolved trauma. That is what they are primarily. There are things, there are patterns of behavior and thoughts <clears throat> that are used to cope with unresolved trauma. <clears throat> Continuing. I have said this many times. If the basis of, or the, if the basis, listen carefully. I have said this many times. If the basis or the foundation from which you think, feel, and thus act derives from trauma, that is not normal. Nor is it, quote-unquote, who you are. And more pertinently, needs to be addressed. <clears throat> I'm going to read that sentence again. I have said this many times. If the basis or the foundation from which you think, feel, and thus act derives from trauma, that is not normal. It is not, quote-unquote, normal. <clears throat> Many of us deem it as such. I used to. Oh, that's, and I'm going to get to my testimony very briefly again. As it relates to a scriptural example of what I'm going to talk about. And there is a scriptural example. There's always a scriptural example. Always. The Bible... <laughs> is a endless supply of spiritual truths. <clears throat> the Word of God is an endless, <clears throat> uh, infinite supply of spiritual truths and resources. <clears throat> anyway, continuing. It is not normal. And is not who you are. And more importantly, needs to be addressed. These patterns and the deception of their permanency is what is holding many of us captive, in bondage, or bound, right? Unable to reach our potential and accomplish the purpose for which we have entered this earth. Because believe it or not, as I said, all of us have a purpose. All of us have an assignment. Even those of you who are maybe listening to me are not believers, who don't believe in Yahweh, don't believe in the Lord Jesus, I want you to know, and I said it before, you have an assignment. Whether you want to believe it or not, anyone who enters the earth through the womb of a woman legally, attached to their scroll, attached to them is a scroll. And that scroll derives from the heart of Yahweh as far as his intentions for your purpose on the earth. Even the Lord Jesus <laughs> had such scroll. <clears throat> I 
those prophesied through the scripture. The incarnate Jesus. Had an assignment. As we know, the most the most important assignment that was ever given, right? Of course, the redemption of mankind. But all of us, whether you're a believer or not, you have a scroll. <clears throat> and that scroll, you have to willingly say yes to it. That's the thing. We're not robots. And so what I'm saying, video format allows for me to uh, to expound a bit more than what I wrote on the status, on the status, right? Thank you, Lord. That an assignment is not coerced by Yahweh for us to fulfill and accomplish. We're not robots. It, it's up to us to give them our yes. <clears throat> to say, yes, Father, I will submit to your will. I will give you my yes. And that yes means I have submitted for what, to the scroll for which you writ, writ, that you have written for my life. He's not going to coerce us to adhere to it. He's not going to coerce us to submit to his will. No! If that were the case, all of mankind would automatically already be believers. And we know that's not the case. <clears throat> right? Continuing. The good news is, and the truth is, I presented the, the, I presented the deception as far as that's the way you are, that's the way you're always going to be. And it cannot be changed. That is a lie. But the good news is, and the truth is, these patterns can be dealt with and addressed. They most certainly can be. Continuing, the question of the hour is, though, are you self-aware enough and willing to have them addressed to get the records that help you need to be healed? And for those of you and us who profess ourselves believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and identify ourselves, hallelujah, as children of Yahweh, are you, my brother, my sister? So first and foremost, that statement prior was to mankind, holistically speaking. But what I'm saying now is particular and specific to those of you, my, my brother, my sisters. Are you, my brother, my sister, self-aware enough and willing to bring the wounds, the traumas, the triggers, and patterns before the Lord and have him heal and deliver you? Because he can and he will. <clears throat> and though many do not acknowledge or even believe this, oftentimes not only is healing required, but deliverance is required as, required as well. <laughs> there are many people in the body of Christ who don't believe this. The believers don't need to be delivered. Once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't need deliverance. And that's simply not true. That's error. That is false doctrine. To suggest, <laughs> just because you profess yourself, and just because you openly confessed, and receive the Lord Jesus into your heart, that doesn't mean you do not need deliverance. <clears throat> there are things that you that were formed in you prior to your conversion. <laughs> there are doors that you open and afford the adversary access to your life prior to your conversion. And those doors are still open. You have to actively, intentionally, willingly get those doors addressed. Whether you want to believe it or not. Now I am a witness of that. Whenever I say, I got to be careful what I say, right? In prior videos, in prior broadcasts. And I've said this point is because I don't want to say something that I am not an I, an I, I'm not a, that I don't have an eyewitness account to testify about. That I may have the knowledge of it, but not the experiential knowledge of it. So whenever I begin to say certain things that pertains to secrets, mysteries, things that I've known, things that I'm learning, things that I've learned, that I have not yet become an eyewitness account of those things. I'm not going to speak about them. That 
that's error. And that is illegal. And I said before, as far as the courts is concerned, if you if you're you only reputable witnesses are are, are to be brought to the po to, to the state to the stand to give an accurate witness account. If you're not a reputable witness, you're thrown out. You can be charged with perjury. Well, perjury. Who lying? And then the spirit is no different. You have to be careful. There are spiritual laws, as I said. There are ordinances. <clears throat> And so, so there are certain things that you may know in knowledge, <clears throat> don't have yet the, the requisite experience and knowledge to speak about. So you have to be careful. But things like this, as far as, again, the gifts of the Spirit, or things like this as it pertains to healing and deliverance, we're to this broadcast, I will speak about because I am a reputable witness. I have an eyewitness account of what I'm speaking of, where this is concerned. <clears throat> And so, yes, a believer who gives themselves, who receives, who receives the Lord Jesus Christ into their heart, can and will still require deliverance, <clears throat> depending on what doors they open to the adversary and afforded access into their lives prior to their conversion. So that is quite possible. Right? And there's sometimes there's a you reopen. Because you regress, you revert back to old ways and old patterns. And I am also a witness of that as I testified. That can happen. <clears throat> anyway. Okay, well, the last of it is, I love you all. Shalom. And so the, oftentimes, and I've said this before, in regards to responding to that question as to whether or not, when is an issue a spiritual issue and when is it a psychological issue? And my response to that is always is, it's oftentimes both. While a spirit is not in, innately responsible for your the patterns that you propagate and you perpetuate in your own life, spirits oftentimes use that door of trauma. And as I said, and there are those who know this, that... Unfortunately so, sin is, sin is not the only door that affords the adversary legal access to your life. Unfortunately. And that's not only sin. Sin, excuse me. Sin is that relates to your own committing of sin. Right? That's not the only door. You committing an act of sin or you transgressing an ordinance is not the only door from which spirits can gain entry into your life. The unfortunate thing is, and the reality of it is, that, that uh, sin committed against you, depending on what kind, can also afford the adversary, unfortunately so. Hallelujah. 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 Recevara. Unfortunately so, sin transgressions of ordinances that are committed or inflicted upon you can also be doors. <clears throat> Trauma, wounds, unfortunately is the case, and I said it before, those are also doors. Sin or transgressions of ordinances that are committed against you are also doors uh, to the adversary. And this is why I said that one of the, 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 the adversary's modus operandi our strategy is to inflict young people with trauma at early age. It's not coincidence. It's not. It's a strategy. An intentional one. To inflict trauma upon us at a young age. Whether through our family or through friends. Unfortunately using the patterns of these individuals to inflict trauma upon us, to perpetuate the cycle. Get us on a hamster wheel. It's an unfortunate reality, but it's a true reality. It's a reality nonetheless. That not only is sins that we commit open doors to the adversary and legal entry, but sins, depending on context, afflicted upon us. 
are inflicted upon us are also doors <clears throat> as it relates to trauma right and again it's not just we often associate those kind of doors in terms of sexual trauma rape molestation but it's not just that trauma is trauma right trauma is trauma and that word there is wounds i believe the actual trauma is actually the greek word for wounds if i'm not mistaken <clears throat> Or wounded, I believe. I believe trauma is the Greek word for wounds or wounded, if I'm not mistaken. Right? So wound is not only from sexual, not only from a sexual, from a sexual trauma, but any kind of trauma, right? As many of us know. And so, um, I gave my testimony as far as my own personal um personal situation as it relates to um my uh shyness and timidity all right that is something that that was that wasn't innate that was something that was there right <clears throat> from childhood but that's not something that was innate to me though many would though i believe that and though many do believe that. And I made a difference as far as being introverted and being shy or timid is not the same thing. <clears throat> People may suggest it is and they presume it is, but it's not. Right? You can be introverted, but not be shy, not be timid. And I made the example as far as Kawhi Leonard is concerned. The many presume blindly to so just say, oh, he's a shy person. And for those of you who don't know, Kawhi Leonard is a, is a basketball player. He previously played for my home team here, well, the home team here, Toronto Raptors, for one year. <laughs> and again, those called him a mercenary. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, he now plays in his hometown of L.A. for the Clippers. And there's a stigma or a perception of him that he's shy. And that's simply not true. Right? He's not shy. He's not timid. He's just very much introverted. Now, no doubt he's had some traumas that are, are publicly and widely known, right? Some of them tied to his father, which I'm going to get to as it relates, as, as it relates to a scriptural example that I'm going to read. The many don't necessarily know, or maybe they, they're aware of it, but they don't know the depths of it. I'm going to read that before I close, right? Or shortly, in a moment. But he's just very much introverted. All right? So there's a difference. There's a difference. <clears throat> but unfortunately for me, as I said before, I serve from both. <clears throat> but I can testify and give God praise that the Lord delivered and healed me from this timidity and shyness. <clears throat> That I long since that I long since thought that I long thought was who I was. <clears throat> and the devil would make you believe that as well. And he would make you believe you too, my brother, my sister. Again, the deception. That's who you are. <clears throat> and it is oftentimes those who are timid that Yahweh wants to use to speak for him. <laughs> those that were once timid those are often prime candidates for Yahweh to use to speak on his behalf because he knows that because you were delivered from such things and such patterns that when you speak for him you will not get you will not you will not slip into pride <clears throat> because you know you know from which you came And you can always testify what he did. So oftentimes, those who are shy and timid, not by nature, but by circumstance. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
not by nature, but by circumstance, shy and timid, timid. Those are prime candidate candidates for him to use, right? And so the, the scriptural example I'm going to use, and it references the spirit because it is a spirit. It's Timothy. So that's found in Second Timothy. And after I read the scripture, I want to make a few points, very important points, before I close. So Second Timothy, one verses two to eight. Right. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, Father. It reads in the Amplified Class, excuse me, in the Amplified Version, because the Amplified Classic Edition had a bit too many words. <laughs> words that weren't necessarily needed, right, to make the point. So I'm just reading the Amplified Version. 2 Timothy 1, verses 2 to 8. And this is, of course, the Apostle Paul writing this letter to Timothy, right? And he says something that's very important that you may miss if you don't read it properly. Right? So let's read. To Timothy, my beloved son. Right? And we know, of course, that Timothy was um, the Apostle Paul's spiritual son. And in many ways, a surrogate son, which I'm going to get to in a moment. <clears throat> this is pertinent to this broadcast, so what I'm trying to get bring forth here. Right? So, um... Continuing, to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, peace, in brackets, meaning inner calm and spiritual being. From God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. You notice here, <laughs> the Apostle Paul always does this in his, in his letters. He always makes a distinction between Yahweh and the Lord Jesus. Always. From God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Continuing, I thank God, Hara Fasuri, in whom I worship and serve with a clear conscience. <laughs> indeed, indeed, Paul, because there are many who don't serve God with a clear conscience. We are masqueraders and are also who are corrupted. Who don't serve Yahweh with a clear conscience. We are deceivers. They will be judged and have been judged. Continuing. The way my forefathers did. As I constantly remember you in my prayers. Again, a spiritual father. Though he's always your... We know the Apostle Paul. For the scholars, the Apostle Paul released Timothy to oversee a church. He was perpetually under his covering. He released him. <clears throat> for the Pentecost, the charismatic... Individuals, <clears throat> he wasn't under his covering. He reached the semblance of stature, and the apostle Paul released him to oversee a church. <clears throat> like I said before, and you know, I wanted me to say that, that that covering, the perversion of that covering doctrine, is sodomy. No grown man is to perpetually be under the covering of another man. That is sodomy. <clears throat> Continuing. Because I constantly remember you in my prayers, night and day. So even though he released them, he still prayed for him. So even though you may, in, in the natural, though even though parents, and I said this before, as far as you're releasing your children, there's nothing wrong when you pray for your children still, even though they're now grown adults. You still pray for them, of course. We ought to release them. Parents, <clears throat> we ought to release your children. And I'm going to get to that as it relates to Timothy. <clears throat> Continuing. As I recall your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I remember your sincere and unqualified faith. The so in brackets, what does that faith mean? The surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ. Sur the surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ. That's a whole, you can do a whole broadcast about that. You're surrendering your submission to Yahweh's will in the Lord Jesus <clears throat> with confident trust in his power, wisdom, and goodness. 
which first lived, which first lived in the heart of your grand. So listen carefully. For the scholars, they know this. This faith that he just described first resided where? Let's continue reading. Every word of scripture is pertinent. Which first lived where? This faith that he's describing. In Yahweh and in the Lord Jesus. It first resided where? <clears throat> in your grandmother Lois. And in your mother Eunice. Now I want to make an amendment, a correction. Because I, 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 I said that Priscilla and Aquila were Timothy's um, mother and grandmother. And that's obviously not true. Aqu Aquila is actually a man. <laughs> So my mistake, right? My mistake. So Luis is his grandmother and Eunice, Lois, excuse me, not Luis. Lois is his grandmother and Eunice is his mother. And the scholars know that his father was not a believer. He was a Greek. And so he was primarily raised by his mother and his grandmother. There's an impact where that's concerned, which I'm going to get to. It's just printed to this broadcast. He was primarily raised, not father, by his mother and his grandmother. Timothy was. Now, while that's great that they were believers, there is an impact where that's concerned. As it relates to his development as a man. This is why, for going continuing now, as I continue, he says what he says to him. <clears throat> And I am confident, hallelujah, that is in, sorry, so he references his grandmother's mother, right? And I am confident that it is in you as well, right? Again, he's honoring his, his mother's grandmother. They are responsible primarily for, <clears throat> for the, planting those seeds, right, of their faith in Timothy. And then, of course, the Apostle Paul converting. Continue. We're... So that is why I remind you to fan into flame the gracious gift of God. In brackets, that gift meaning that inner fire, that special endowment, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So this is again, this is this is a, a function of an, of a true apostle. They are, they have a very strong gift of impartation. And that's intentionally so because those who are apostles are often itinerant, right? They don't stay in one place. That's why they're called sent. You're not sent to, you got to be careful. An apostle in its innate design is itinerant. They are meant to, they are emissaries, as I said before, and they are meant to plant, advance the kingdom of Yahweh through planting Ad administrative ecclesias in specified regions. So they travel to a region with diplomatic immunity. And because of that diplomatic immunity, right, to deal with demon powers in that region, also, right, as part of their packaging, their toolbox as an apostle, a true one, they have a very strong gift of impartation. So they're able to release graces on individuals to, to, to properly, because he can't, his job is to build a church in a region, right? So he has to be able to impart gifts to the, to establish leadership in that church. So he can leave those leaders to oversee that church. It's not about him. He is to release graces to build up leaders. So they, those leaders can properly administrate and, and govern that church in that region. <clears throat> That's what a true apostle does. They don't stay in the place of people calling them daddy, daddy, daddy. Build their empire in one place. <clears throat> no. Oftentimes, they're, they're, they are itinerant. They travel. <clears throat> and they have a very strong gift of impartation. So they release graces on people. They have to. It's not about just teaching doctrine. Well, that's important. Don't get me wrong, right? The apostles are very astute in doctrine. Yeah, that's why it's called the apostles' doctrine, right? They're very astute in establishing doctrine. They have to be. 
Especially if they are itinerant, they're establishing a church. They can't teach false doctrine and spread false doctrine to different regions. No! They are equipped with a teaching capacity to establish sound foundational doctrine as it relates to our beliefs. Right? So along with that, why am I going here? <laughs> but along with that, <clears throat> they have to be able to not only teach sound doctrine, but release graces to empower individuals to properly lead the church that they establish. Right? So what Timothy is relates to the Apostle Paul and Timothy is no different. He released graces on him. He imparted to him. That's what a father does. They're servants. They build up their sons. <clears throat> they don't receive service. They serve. And they release and they impart. <clears throat> And there are those who blaspheme, there are those who actually say and proclaim that the Apostle Paul is a false apostle. I, I don't even, the audacity. Anyway, I don't even want to go there. Let me just stay on track, Lord. Help me to stay on track. So continuing. For God did not, so this is again the, the pertinent part here. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice, or fear. And so very clearly here, the Apostle Paul helps us to identify and understand, understand that there are often times, and most times, our spirits attached to particular emotions. It's not poetic language. He's not saying it to be poetic. Oh, a spirit of fear. Oh, it's being poetic. No! <clears throat> He's helping us understand that there, there is a spirit of fear. There is a spirit who expresses itself in that emotion and seeks to perpetuate that emotion in humans. And does. Hmm. But I want to get to why he was saying the Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy. Something that's not often discussed, which I've been led to say, as it relates to his upbringing. Timothy, I'm saying. Why would he encourage Timothy in this way? Why? I'm going to get to that. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear in the Amplified Version. But... He has given us a spirit of what? Power, love, and of a sound mind or sound judgment in this version. And personal discipline. What does that mean in brackets? Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. So do not be ashamed, he's saying to Timothy, to testify about our Lord or about me, his prisoner. But with me, take your share of suffering for the gospel. Continue to preach regardless of the circumstances, in brackets. In accordance with the power of God, for his power is invincible, in brackets. So, why am I saying, what am I alluding to as far as Timothy is concerned? You know, we often, um, yeah, I'm going to be probably an hour. <laughs> I want it to be quick. The Spirit would not say that. Wouldn't, obviously, the Spirit isn't. <laughs> the Spirit would say otherwise. And so, we often talk about, you know, so we're starting over again. Why am I alluding or making reference to Timothy's upbringing? We often um, emphasize, right, the, the impact that an absentee father or a lack of a male in a home does to daughters. But in my humble opinion, it is my conviction, my belief, that not enough emphasis is made as it relates to the impact that an absentee father or a lack of a man in the home has on a, on a boy or a male. Not enough emphasis has been placed on that. That while the lack of a father in a woman's life does have effects and serious impact as it relates to probably promiscuity, rejection issues, low self-esteem issues, affirmation issues, which social media has very much helped to band-aid and to propagate, as I said many times, <clears throat> particularly as it relates to women, Using social media 
through demonic trading to receive their affirmation. Again, some of you take it to the extreme of dressing provocatively and seductively to receive not only affirmation and validation from men and from people, but money! <clears throat> As it relates to IG models. <clears throat> but anyway, we have to talk about that impact, but not enough emphasis, I find, is placed on the impact that it has on men. Well, as well, we can commend uh, Luis and Eunice as far as Timothy is concerned. They are not men. And so those two women, though honorable, though faithful in the Lord, are not men. And so they can never teach Timothy how to be a man. Nor establish his identity as a man. They cannot do that. And no woman can. It's just the nature of what it is. <clears throat> So, again, I said this many times, hallelujah, holy ghost. And I said this many times, I honor single mothers. It's not easy, man, to raise a family by yourself. It's not easy. And as, as I said before, it is, it, a, it is a mantle that they take on that is too heavy for them to bear. It's a burden they ought not to be bearing. No matter what feminism helps to pro propagate, as far as we do, men are not needed. <clears throat> men are not needed in society. I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> men are needed. In the home, as it really pertinently to this broadcast, but overall, men are needed. <clears throat> but anyway, back on, back where I'm going here, as it relates to Timothy. There are things that a woman cannot teach a man. You teach a young boy. As far as affirming him as a man. There are disciplines, responsibilities, that only a man can teach a, a, a man can teach a boy. A woman can try to do those same things that relates to discipline and responsibility but the affirmation that a boy receives from his father by establishing that kind of discipline and affirmation is not the same thing. And what do I mean by that? We know in olden times, right? You know, um, that fathers would take their children to hunt, you know, hunt and do quote unquote manly things, whereas to hunt or, you know, to build things with their hands and, you know, help them fix their car and these kind of things. These are not, these are not tertiary things. These are not arbitrary things. Like as far as non-significant, non or unsignificant. They're purposeful. They're purposeful. Not only are, is it for the purposes of bonding, but it's also the purposes of forming affirmation. Discipline. <clears throat> Assertion. That is required for a man to effectively lead. <clears throat> and these things only can come from a man. Female validation does not, does not, does not, in the formative years of a child, does not help him acquire assertiveness. It does not. <clears throat> that is only cultivated through the affirmation of a man. <clears throat> So oftentimes what happens, unfortunately is the case, in the case of Timothy and other men who are raised without a father in their lives, this form of cultivation of, of assertion, of discipline, of responsibility through a man has a consequence. <clears throat> And unfortunately so, as it relates specifically, and I have to go here, as it relates specifically to the, bl uh, the black community, that there are single mothers <clears throat> who not only are ill-equipped 
to establish this assertion in a man, but also uh, what is the case at times. I'm not going to say most times. I want to be careful. But uh, what what is the case at times is that there are single mothers, not only in the black community but as a whole, who don't do who don't do the the requisite work to cultivate this assertion in their child. And to the into the, the extreme of it, they actually shut it down to establish control. And I get it. A single mother trying to raise trying to raise a, a young boy into a man it's it's almost i don't want to say an impossible task but it's, it's difficult it's very difficult and so whether unknowingly or knowingly because there are those who do it knowingly whether consciously or subconsciously because there are those who do it consciously that their behavior these women hmm, these women shut down the young boy's ability to express himself and therefore cultivate the requisite assertion he needs to be a man. <clears throat> and that assertion is required and needed for him to effectively lead. And oftentimes what these mothers do, not oftentimes, at times, what mothers do is in order to control him, they shut that down. They discourage it. And because a man is not there to properly cultivate that, one of two things happen. As we know, either the boy becomes very docile, timid, unable to express himself, or the other extreme, he rebels. He becomes, he becomes angry. <clears throat> Resentful. An angry man. Highly emotional. One or two extremes. The, doc the docile, timid man, timid young boy becomes a, a docile, timid, sometimes even effeminate man. Or the other extreme, he becomes a very angry, highly emotional, rebellious man. <clears throat> Help me, Holy Ghost. Trauma. Again. It's not easy to raise children. Single parent home is not easy. It was never meant to be so. The nuclear family, the nuclear home, as it relates to a mother, a father, and children, is what is the intention of Yahweh. A nuclear home, again, why it's called nuclear, as we know, is because a nucleus consists of three parts, a proton, neutron, and electron. That's why it's called the nuclear home. Three, right? So the nuclear home, a mother, father, and a child, this is the intention of Yahweh, to, to build a home. And this is where the adversary, one of his main primary targets is fathers. He knows the power of a father, particularly in the spirit, <clears throat> as far as headship. This is why the feminist movement propagates a, a negative connotation as it relates to patriarchy. They don't even know, some of them don't even know what they're doing in the spirit. <clears throat> it's an agenda. It's an agenda. They know the power of male headship far more than some of us do. And a man is quite capable and is responsible for framing the identity of his children. That's what he does. That's what he does. He affirms his daughter's beauty so that when she gets married, she knows how a man is supposed to treat her. And he affirms his son as a man. So he, uh, he presents him with a role model as to who, who, how he is to act as a man. And when, that vac when the, the, the absence of a father is there, that's a vacuum. And so these children, whether male or female, will seek these things in other means, in corrupted, perverted means. It is a vacuum. 
mother can't do that. A mother can tell her, her daughter, yeah, she's beautiful, but it's far different when it comes from a man, her father. A mother can affirm her, her son as, as a man. It's not the same. It's when a father does it. And the fatherless home produces trauma. Trauma in the children. And of course, trauma as it relates to the mother. It's not easy. <clears throat> and it's unfortunate because, again, this trauma in the formative years of these children helps to shape them they, who they are. But again, just because you've been that way your whole life doesn't mean that's who you are. <clears throat> If the way you are, if your personality is primarily derived or formed, if it's the foundation of it is primarily through trauma, that is not normal. That needs to be addressed. <clears throat> there is leadership that a man, a father, provides a home that cannot be duplicated. No matter what feminist wants to, feminism wants to make you think. No matter what agenda they propagate or perpetuate. Male headship is needed. It is required. <clears throat> in society, and particularly in this, pertinent to this broadcast, in the home. And anyone who propagates otherwise... <clears throat> It's of the Antichrist. Agenda. And as the, I believe it was Cephas, he said that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And indeed it is. <clears throat> Part of that is his feministic agenda, feminism agenda. What it's been doing to women, raising independent women, women who think they don't need a man, And I said many archetypes. I don't want to get into the archetypes again. I want to be under an hour, so I'm almost done. Is there anything else? Let me see. So as it relates to Timothy, that's why he was encouraging him. It's an unfortunate thing. Where men are concerned. It happens. When a man is not in the home. This is the consequence at times. And I, I, would, I would hazard to say, and most of the times. One extreme or the other. Either timid, docile, or angry and rebellious. <clears throat> and even though he was converted, Timothy, it's possible still had to encourage him. Don't be timid. That's not who you are, Timothy. While he honors his mother and his grandmother, responsible for his upbringing, that's to remind him. No flu, no fault of his own. Those are spirits that often, through trauma, have entry into young children. Particularly men, <clears throat> but women too, of course. Whether you want to believe it or not. Again, there are believers who don't believe that believers can be afflicted by demon powers. And they are so much deceived. There are people walking around who profess themselves believers. Who are demonized. Well, yes, there are. Those spirits who are afflicting them, spirits who are influencing them, influencing their behavior. Oh, yes, there are. I was once one. That's why I can speak on it. I am a reputable witness. You can be a believer and still be aff afflicted and oppressed and influenced by demon powers. Yes, you can. If there's a door. Through sin. Through trauma, you sure can. 
But again, the good news, the gospel said, said to mean the good news or glad tidings. The good news is this, that there is healing. There is deliverance. But again, the question is, are you willing? Are you self-aware enough? Are you humble enough to get help? And as it relates particularly to my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, are you willing to go before him to get these things dealt with? <clears throat> to understand that's not who you are. Even though you've been that way your whole life, that's not who you are. <clears throat> that's not what you are called to be. Yahweh has an assignment for you. And the adversary has used trauma to help stagnate that purpose and keep you in bondage. That's not who you are. No matter what he may try to make you think or what others may say, oh, that's just Gary, you know. Antisocial. <clears throat> Put labels on you, you know. Oh, he's just quiet. Or she's just loud, you know. She's just abrasive, you know. She's an angry woman, you know. Labels. That's not who you are. Even though you may believe that. It's not who you are. Any personality traits that you that that you, that you exhibit or you express that derives from trauma is not normal. And that's not who you are. And the Lord Jesus is present to heal, present to deliver. Heal you of those wounds, or those thought patterns, but deliver you from the spirits that are not the source of the trauma. But are, are, I wouldn't say co-conspirators, but are, what's that term? Well, yeah, I mean, I can say that, All right? There is healing. There is deliverance. In the Lord Jesus, the Holy Ghost, there's healing. Father, I pray. I pray for those that this applies to. Those who have a heart. Who are self-aware enough. You have shown them, Father. There are wounds that they have that are unaddressed. Those under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Those under the sound of my voice, who are watching, who are listening, who hear me. Father, even now, wherever they are, I pray that your presence, that your fire, that your anointing would be released to them to heal them of those wounds, to touch them where they are, even now, Father. Those that have a heart that is open. Those that want healing. Those that want deliverance, Father. I am praying that as they hear me right now, that, Father, you will touch them. Now. Those that are hearing me, Father, they are suffering with fear, with anxiety, with rejection, with condemnation, with shame with pride, with lust, with perversion, I command those spirits to leave them now in the name of Jesus. Get out now in Jesus' name. And that you will close those doors, Father. That those spirits will not enter in again. But you will, your will be done in their lives. That they will reach 
Hallelujah. The purpose for which you have them. For it is all for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to stay under an hour, but it's fine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So have an awesome rest of your week. That's not who you are. That's not who you are. Yahweh has a plan for you. Purpose for you. That purpose cannot be fulfilled to its potential until its fullness, until those things are addressed. Right? And to those of you who are not believers, who don't believe in the Lord Jesus, and you're watching me by chance, wherever you are, know the Lord is not partial. Yahweh loves you just the same. And so he's present to heal you, deliver you. Right? Receive the Lord Jesus into your heart. And he will change in a way that you can never imagine. The invite is open. It's not a, a partial gospel. It's not a, a selective gospel. The good news is for everybody. For all of mankind, because he died for mankind. <clears throat> he didn't die for a select few. The Lord Jesus Christ died for mankind. And so you're part of that. So if you're not a believer, he is present to heal, deliver you. Will you receive him? He's waiting. All right. So have an awesome rest of you. Hara. Hara son Surya. Honor you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your obedience to our Father. Honor you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the price you paid on that cross. The price many of us have no clue about. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Have an awesome rest of your week. I don't know when I'll be back. But as is the case for now, I will be back at some point. <laughs> no matter how I may be feeling. All right? So keep me in your prayers. I love you dearly. As I pray for you, pray for me. Forgive, let go. Don't hold any offense in your heart towards anybody. It's not worth it. Right? It's never worth it. Never. All right? So have an awesome rest of your week. See you again soon. Shalom.